and that works. Is it literally something as simple as the order of our operations is completely wrong? Such as position render planes is setting the relative transforms translation, but the scale is wrong on the translation? So if we call like resize render quads here, Yeah, that looks like it's 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 just the order of operations of these two functions. So if we just go back to what we had not too long ago, and all we do is reverse the order of position render planes and position render quads and compile that out instead. So it's literally an order of operations thing with the transforms, which really makes no damn sense to me that I should be able to get this relative transform, I should be able to set things on that transform and then apply it. Like, how this transform is actually acting is as if I'm applying one thing after the other. Such as I'm scaling and then I'm translating in the order that it gets applied in the single frame, because it's so like you apply one transformation, then it applies to the other. Yeah, because this is the original code that I spent that time working on, just with the order of operations swapped. And it works. So obviously, the application of transforms is just freaking garbage. So no wonder I had no freaking idea what the hell's going on. It's because if you resize and then position, it's it's applying the scale and then it's applying the position and if I was doing it the other way it was applying the position and applying the scale and no wonder everything will get completely screwed to hell because if you translate something and then you scale it like stuff gets all fucked up so I should have been doing them both at the exact same time the 
load of shit. That's what you go. That's what you get for. Update camera. Camera lead. Update camera. So. No, dimensions are correct. Wrong place. Well, both, really. Both. Basically, matrix math was uh, not being applied as I expected it to be. I expected those transforms to not be commutative in how they operated. I expected them to be absolute. So if you said get transform and then you applied a change to it, it was just applying it to the root object as opposed to applying the transform in addition to the previous one. You know, I'd be like, I want to set the position over here and I want to set the scale over here and the scale should be the scale should be one, the position should be over there, and you'd expect the scale to always happen first. Because that's how normally things work.
Alright, so we'll see if this works. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff with the camera that we're going to have to play around with. Like, I don't know, there's... Even just jumping around, even with a little bit of lead and a little bit of zoom, it's still kind of annoying. The, the camera is, it's just... It's too responsive. Seems like what I want is like the camera has to be far enough out of position. Maybe it's that the zoom just needs to be super fast. Like we got our zoom speed should be maybe like, you know, we'll just make it a thousand. That is really slow feeling. It probably has more to do with Bitey's movement at the moment than anything else. Let's just up that camera lead speed to something higher as well. Let's change his movement a little bit and see if... See if giving him a lot more active control makes a difference.
Yeah, it looks like we do need a bit of a... The lead vector needs to actually... be based on... the current velocity, because... well, or something else, because when I'm falling I definitely want to be able to see farther down, but I'm not. Yeah, the velocity is really doing crazy stuff in that transition, which is also screwing with the camera. So I probably shouldn't be going off of the reported velocity. I should be going off of like the previous position and some other smaller, more reliable values. And then smoothing the velocity based on what the previous velocity was. Well, let's change the lead vector. So the lead vector is going to be equal to velocity well, vector is going to be in the direction of our velocity so when we're falling down it'll go down We can also do some really crazy stuff where we don't actually lead the perspective cameras, which I have no idea if that would even look right at all, but it might actually look better than normal.
Clear proxy. Velocity current. Yeah, it's probably that. Velocity dot y. Yeah, this is what's kind of screwed up. We'd have to do it by component. Basically a big pile of trash right here. Well, it should at least lead us, but I'm going to have to think about how I want everything to work, because obviously that ground coming in there is just not what we want. I mean the camera's too responsive. That's that's obvious. That's obviously true. But the big problem is that the ground is coming up faster. The ground in the foreground is coming up faster than we want it to. And that's what I was worried about earlier. Which basically means like what we want is we want the orthographic camera to move independently of the perspective camera so the perspective camera like we would not lead the perspective camera but we would lead the orthographic camera And it looks all sorts of screwed up right now, that's... Yeah. Er... So,
But at least Bitey running looks cool. So yeah, it's obvious we're going to have to take a much, much bigger stab at the camera stuff. And we're going to have to screw around with the perspective on it. Like, I, I do want to be able to lead the camera, but we need to lead the camera with the perspective camera differently than we're leading it otherwise. So we need to, like... We need to move those render planes, but the render planes need to, the render captures need to be separate. They need to not move. The render captures need to move at a different relative freaking position uh, than the render planes, which is madness. It's kind of funny when you think about it. It's like we have two alternate realities, and, and the reason that they need to move differently is because the different perspectives put them in different positions. So if you're leading the orthographic camera, the the actual lead difference is different. It's different units. So let's see if I can do that real quick. It should be like Let me call position position cameras. So we basically need to take the current position. And subtract the current lead vector from it. Well, let's see if this does anything good. Well, if we set the follow speed to something ridiculous, we should be able to see exactly what this is. The follow speed is right now at 10,000. Let's just set it to something massive. So the camera is always in the position that we want it to be in. What the hell? Oh, okay, yeah. So we're not getting the, the bushes to come up to greet us. We also want to maintain a constant distance from the...
Yeah, the background doesn't look too bad. And then we need to change the... We need to change something else. We need to change... Basically, our current position... X value should be something else. Are we setting background capture max view distance is min render box x? Because basically what we want is we want a constant x for our foreground capture component. So we want like current position dot x equals negative 5500 or something like that. We should actually be grabbing like the current position here. Uh, it's snapping to the landing position because of the velocity initially uh, instantly equals zero. Yeah, sorry, I had wasn't looking at chat there for a while. And the thing I was looking at in the background is it, this fixes like this theoretically, you know, the the fix is to not lead the the perspective camera in the in the foreground, and I wanted to make sure that the background also looked okay in the same thing. Well, that just looks all sorts of weird, doesn't it? Okay, so we can't do that.
And that has to do with the foreground moving at a different speed with the, the lead of the, the camera. Basically the foreground and background, if they're at different distances, uh, looks like it doesn't look good at all. And probably the reason that we can't see it right here, I mean that we don't notice anything being awful right, right there is because we're not low enough to actually see the background. Probably looks really shitty here too. I don't think that can pull help. So what's going on there is basically the uh, we're moving at different speeds. So you know we've moved one camera, but we haven't moved the other, and that looks like absolute garbage. Let's see if we can just get away with um, the Z axis not moving. So at least left and right looks good. But I think basically what that's saying is the lead for the camera, like we probably have just that same problem I was talking about before where if we lead in the Z axis, we're pretty much fucked. Nope, that looks like shit too. No, it's it is not much better. It is still awful. Less is still awful. There, there is no, like, this is an experiment. Like, does this work at all? You know, it's like, the answer is no. The answer is, it was no. And the answer is no, they have to be the same. So if we lead in the negative axis, we're going to have a lot of freaking problems. So we cannot lead the camera in the z-axis. So what it basically means is it means a lot of things for... 
how our game camera works. Like, it means that we're not going to be looking up too much. Yeah, and camera controls in 2D 2D games are one of the biggest one of the biggest issues with a lot of a lot of stuff. Like I'm going to have to go look at some other games just to make sure I'm not running into the same walls over and over again. But Yeah, and this this is just locking it into one axis for leading and it already feels just a lot better. Yeah, the initial the initial point there works a lot better just like don't change the freaking Y on the player it just looks so much smoother if you lock it a little bit It just it just looks so much better if you don't screw around with it.
So that's some really basic stuff, and I think we'll tune that from there. just some basic stuff. Alright, well I think I'm pretty much done for today. Um, we've got a lot of small things done and the camera stuff is pretty important. Um, just getting some basic stuff in there so Adam can play around with it. Let me pop open the level that Adam looked, put together earlier and we'll see how the basic camera stuff looks in there. I mean obviously the camera needs like a massive amount of work. But the basics are in there like we'll be we'll be following there's a speed for the follow there's a speed for all the other things and um, it's somewhere to start Are the fat sacks just not going to do anything? Fat sacks AI is broken. No. Where'd Fat Sack go? Oh, he spawned way off in the back. I thought we had them doing stuff earlier. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of games that we'll be checking out for momentum stuff. This is mainly just the super super simple version of our momentum that we've got. So because we we weren't even able to move until a couple days ago, things like that. So we're we're just slowly messing with stuff at this point. So why aren't these guys moving? See what their AI is telling them to do at the moment. Well, 
Well, they aren't doing anything. Their fat sack movement stuff is not even getting calm. Well, they're supposed to be setting their movement controller inside of here. This probably has something to do with when they spawn in. Yeah, he's just not getting assigned his his movement object. So, if our movement equals null, we basically want to say like him movement equals him parent get. If him parent does not equal. So there, they'll move now. Or I may have had a bit of a hack in here, I'm not sure if I remember correctly on it. Dash can add the actor and type. Well, why did the parent move an object? That didn't work at all. Why? What are you? What are you doing? And movement controller equals null.
That should do it. Yeah, I'm looking at your 